How can we split a quadratic polynomial into linear factors? You may have seen already several cases, but after watching this video, you know how to split all quadratic polynomials in two factors. So let's start with, the, uh, with an example. x squared minus 1, how can we split that? Well, it's of the form a squared minus b squared, so you know that that equals a minus b times a plus b. So uh, split, how do we split x squared minus 1? Well, your a equals x and your b equals 1, so that yields x minus 1 times x plus 1. Then, well then you with x squared plus 1. Also, no linear term present, but now if you look only at real numbers, we cannot factorize this one further. That's called an irreducible polynomial. Now let's try to see what happens if we include a linear term, like this one, x squared minus 4x plus 3. So we include the minus 4x. Well, you know that you have to look for numbers whose product equals 3 and whose sum equals minus 4. Well, the numbers minus 1 and minus 3 do the job, because minus 1 times minus 3 equals 3, and minus 1 plus minus 3 equals minus 4. And then, we, then you know that you can factorize like x minus 1 times x minus 3. Always check this, you get x squared minus 3x minus x equals minus 4x plus 3. So that's fine. <coughs> well, and uh, now uh, uh, let's uh, see if you do not see uh, this immediately. So we have a, a quadratic polynomial, x squared plus bx plus c, and we want to split it into two linear factors. So I'm going to do this. Well, we know this x1 and x2, they are both zeros of your polynomial. So what you first have to do is to find the zeros of your polynomial. So we have our x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now I don't see this minus 1 and minus 3, so how can I do it then? I have to find the zeros first. So I complete the square, so we get the x minus 2 squared. Well, if you would work that out, you get x squared minus 4x, that's okay, plus 4, that's too much. So subtract the minus 4, and we copy the 3, which we had over here, equals 0. So uh, we bring the minus 4 plus 3 to the other side, so 1 to the other side. Uh, x minus 2 squared equals 1, so x minus 2 equals plus or minus 1, so the solutions are x equals 1 or x equals 3. So my x1 equals 1 and my x3, 2 equals 3, the two zeros of my polynomial. And then I can write down the factorization. x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals x minus x1 times x minus x2. Of course, the order doesn't matter because x minus 3 times x minus 1 is the same as x minus 1 times x minus 3. Always check, of course. We have x squared minus 3x minus x minus 4x plus 3. So that's indeed correct. So let's do a more complicated one where it would be kind of annoying to uh, complete the square, and uh, where it would be uh, hard to see a, a product of two numbers which equals 1 and a su sum of numbers which equals 5 over 2. So what are we going to do then? Well, we need to find the zeros of the polynomial. Uh, fortunately, we have the quadratic formula for that. So we have x equals minus b, so here the b minus b minus 5 over 2, plus or minus square root of b squared, 25 over 4, minus 4 times a times c, where a equals 1, c equals 1, so minus 4 divided by 2a divided by 2. So what do we get? Under the square root we get 25 over 4 minus uh, 16 over 4 equals a 9 over 4, uh, so we get uh, dividing by 2 a minus 5 over 4 plus or minus 1 half times the square root of 9 over 4. Well, that works out nice, the square root of 9 over 4 equals 3 over 2. So we get minus 5 over 4 plus or minus 3 over 4. So zeros are with the minus sign x1 equals minus 2 and x2 equals minus 1 half. And check if you take the product, you get indeed uh, 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 the, the 1 and the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the sum of the 2 will give you the uh, minus 5 over 2 later on. So we know that our polynomial x squared plus 5 over 2 times x plus 1 equals x uh, minus x1 times x minus x2, where x1 equals minus 2, so we get the x uh, plus 2, and the x2 equals minus 1 half, so we get the plus 1 half. Always check, of course. We get an x squared, check. Uh, 
plus one half x plus two x, so that equals two halves x or five over two times x, plus two times one half equals one plus one. So that's indeed correct. So what would happen now if your term in front of the x squared is not a one? What do you do then? Because up to now we always took a one in, uh, as our, our first coefficient. Well, that's easy. You just factorize the factor of two, for example, here out. So we get two times a polynomial, which has its first coefficient one. And, okay, this, this is exactly the one we already did over here. So we get two times what we already had. So if you don't have one as a first coefficient, that's no problem at all. So up till now we did only uh, uh, real factorizations. What happens if we also use complex numbers? Well, we do exactly the same. Factorize, for example, x squared plus 2x plus 2. Find the zeros first. So solve x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. Complete the square. It yields x plus 1 squared. That's x squared plus 2x plus 1. So you need another one in order to get the 2 over there. Equals 0. Bring the plus 1 to the other side. So we have x plus 1 squared equals minus 1. So uh, x plus 1 equals plus or minus i. Or x equals minus 1 plus or minus i. So first 0 minus 1 minus i, and second 0 minus 1 plus i. So your factorization, x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals x minus x1 times x minus x2. And again, of course, you can check. And so you see, <coughs> in this way, you can factorize all second degree polynomials uh, in uh, two linear terms, if you are allowed to use uh, complex numbers, or otherwise, if you ca can't use complex numbers, you can factorize some in two linear terms and others will be irreducible like this one.